So uh, welcome to this Thursday afternoon drawing session. Um, today we are going to draw uh, pumpkin designs. So if you guys are in the mood for Halloween and trying to think of what you might want to carve, um, starting with a pencil and paper is a good way to do it. And so I'm going to uh, walk us through that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will take a look at some ideas. So the very first thing I found, there's a bunch of images online that I looked at. Uh, we did a squirrel um, last time and I just thought this was hilarious, a little squirrel eating a pumpkin. It looks like he's wearing it as a hat. Um, oh, I have a cat up here trying to help me out. She might step on everything. Um, okay, so there's a lot of different designs you can do with a pumpkin. You can carve a silhouette like this cute little bat. Um, you can use other objects to kind of uh, create something else besides, you know, just a jack-o'-lantern. Um, there are some surface design patterns that are really fun to think about. Um, you can kind of sketch it out and then carve around the skin. This is a little more complicated of a pattern. Um, of course, these are always fun. These amazing pumpkin designs that professional carvers do. Um, it takes a little bit of uh, patience and sort of uh, skill with clay or other sculpture to get the hang of this, but it's definitely within the realm of possibility. So if you feel like drawing something that complex on your um, drawing today, go for it. But I kind of like some of these simple ones where, you know, piled up these little pumpkins look like they're part of a little campfire. Um, maybe they have little battery lights in them uh, to make them safe. Uh, I think they're really cute. Now this pumpkin, I thought, these pumpkins I should say, were so funny to me because um, of the hair made out of these plant materials. And so that's something that um, I think I, I could use in one of my designs. I have a cactus that's enormous, and actually an aloe plant that has big spiky um, leaf, I don't know, they're not leaves whatever they're called, I don't know. Um, it's big and spiky, so I could see this being a really fun hairdo for a pumpkin. Um, this is another surface design, kind of like the other one with the reading, um, the cat reading. Beautiful and very detailed, but you know, just kind of a, a linear uh, design. Nothing wrong with doing it linear, but I just thought I'd mention that. Um, this one was so cute and simple with the chicken wire on the inside kind of making the pattern of that hen and whatever that found object is making the bit of her tail and the cute little chick next door. Um, these little uh, skeleton hands reaching up were so clever. I thought that was a really fun idea. Um, this one with the little um, stem as a, a nose I thought it was kind of cute. And then this one, I did a close-up. I was looking at a video, and this person used potatoes and made the eyes and the teeth out of potato, which is why it's so white. Um, and then there's carrot in the middle. So with all of those ideas, I'm going to um, turn our attention. There's my cat. Um, to just a regular pumpkin. Okay, you're going to have to move. Um, <laughs> sorry about the kitty, uh, to just a general pumpkin shape. This is definitely one of our gentler shapes to draw. Um, and just kind of whatever shape you want, doesn't matter. And then if your idea for the stem is a big part of the design, you might want to include it. Um, you can add some details if you want to add sort of the little striation of the, the pumpkin, you can. But at this point, I think it's more fun to kind of brainstorm ideas and think about, you know, what do you want in your pumpkin? So, you know, we could go with sort of a classic eyes and nose and a mouth kind of pumpkin. Um, you could think about what that might look like and think about the parts that you would carve out um, and the parts that you would leave alone. Um, this is why sketching is so helpful because you'll be able to uh, consider these things and if you make a mistake it's not a big deal because of course you can um, erase and fix it whereas once you once you make a change on the pumpkin you might have a problem 
um, you might not have anything else you can work with. So if this was my idea, kind of a simple idea, um, you know, there are some parts to think about, you know, what am I going to leave and what am I going to cut out? So typically, like if the light is on the inside, I don't know if you guys can hear, my daughter is laughing downstairs. I don't know what is getting her all riled up, but she's having some fun. Um, if this is all dark, uh oh, I hear little feet. She might be coming in here. Uh, this part of the eye also might be dark. So we might carve around that and might include that as part of the pumpkin that we leave. So this one would be included as well. And just kind of shade around. And kind of, this is a working sketch. This is meant to be something useful for you to figure out if this is going to be the design you want. So I'm not as worried in this one for the accuracy or the details of the shading. I just want the shading to actually point to whether this is going to work. So if I choose to leave the teeth, um, the pumpkin, I can just darken that up. But I could do something like the um, potato teeth in the other one. Um, so that's something I could make a little note to myself and erase out that part and say, you know, I want the teeth to actually look kind of white. I'm not making them too sharp. I'm going to say um, potato. Potato here. Um, and then another thing I could do, if I don't want to leave this open to be to show through to the inside of the pumpkin that might have a candle in it, I could do what that other pumpkin carver did, and I could put a little rounded bit of potato there so it's nice and white, and then have the darker area for an eye. Um, that could be really effective and fun. Um, so <laughs> this kind of looks like a little wacky pumpkin. Um, so this is one uh, type of design, kind of simple, but maybe we want to do something a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to just rotate my sketchbook and I'm going to, again, just start with kind of a roundish shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. Pumpkins are not perfectly round. And maybe in this one, um, maybe I have like this is where the mouth is going to be. I love octopus. Um, so maybe maybe this one was trying to eat an octopus and there's like a little tentacle coming out, which is kind of a weird, scary thing, but it's Halloween. So something kind of harmless and need little suction cups on there maybe. Um, I think it could be kind of fun if there's lots of little tentacles coming out, but maybe this doesn't really work. Maybe this is too hard to do. This is why on paper this could be a lot of fun to figure out and see if I like it. And maybe the the mouth is sort of a circle, like trying to close. And maybe actually the eyes this time are a little bit shocked. Maybe the eyes are looking down at the the octopus trying to escape. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy and a little scary, so I don't know if that's really going to work. But if you also like octopus and all kinds of little creepy crawly things, you could have, you know, some of these tentacles made out of other things. Um, you don't have to stick to just pumpkin uh, when you are making your pumpkin design. You can think of other materials that could work for that. Um, now, this doesn't really look like a pumpkin right now, so I'm going to... Uh, just put a little stem in there and just some of these little marks to kind of indicate this is a pumpkin. Um, so that's another idea. Uh, but I'm not totally crazy about that. Um, let's keep drawing. Let's see what else we can come up with. Um, now some of the surface design pieces are a lot of fun. They're very beautiful. In fact, um, some years ago I saw at a pumpkin carving contest uh, an artist who had sort of carved away the bright orange part of the skin that you see to the left and had left um, most of this kind of that peach color underneath, but she had um, allowed for a few fish designs to stay in the bright orange. So it looked like these giant um, 
I guess, koi or goldfish that were sort of swimming around. And uh, it was really beautiful, really well done. And so that's something you could do is sort of decide, okay, if I was going to silhouette this and make this all dark, you know, some beautiful design, some natural design. Um, and, you know, the fun part about today is we're really using drawing as a way to um, help us work out a challenge, a design challenge. And um, it's a useful tool for something like that. So, you know, drawing doesn't just have to be something that gets put into a frame. It can be something, oh, maybe a carved out eye there. I carved out the eye there. Um, it can be something that can, you know, help you plan. Um, so this is something to keep in mind. Um, and I'm just darkening up this too, just to kind of indicate, you know, the light, there's a candle in the pumpkin and this stuff isn't open necessarily. It's more like that orangey peachy color on the inside of the pumpkin. Um, okay. So that could be one pumpkin. Another one uh, could be, uh, you could really have fun with the nose of, of the, um, that, that sort of vine that comes down into the pumpkin before it goes out. You could turn it on its side. It becomes this wonderful nose. You could have sort of cranky eyebrows. This, this pumpkin could be really kind of fussy. I guess in all of them, I keep drawing these really big eyes, and that's really to make it more expressive, but you can put whatever eyes you want in here. Um, and so right away, you know, just turn on its side like that. It looks so funny. It really has that sort of angry look to it. Um, and maybe like a super grumpy mouth. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could uh, put, you know, sort of a little hat on it, like a witch's hat. If you're thinking of something like that, and that could be made out of whatever, um, and then maybe hair, you could have some, I don't know, whatever, whatever hair for your character makes sense. Um, so for the witch, you know, there could be like sticks, something that looks really um, sort of jagged and messy and. Um, I don't know, something witch-like, I guess. You can put that in there and uh, and then have your little hat. Um, but actually, this brings me to uh, my concept for, I think, maybe my pumpkin design that I want to do, which is involving my aloe plant. Now, the aloe plant, I'll just draw it really quickly for you here, has these big paddles, I guess. I don't know what you would call them. I have all these botanists in my normal classes at the Arts Council of Princeton, and they always tell me what the plants are, and when I don't have them, I, I don't know what all the terminology is or what to call it. But basically, the plant is huge, and it has a lot of these spiky things. So if I imagine, here's my pumpkin. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. And then I cut a hole in the top. And I put the plant in, just the whole planter right inside. So all you really will see is these spikes coming out. I could make a really fun sort of a punk uh, pumpkin if I want. So maybe I could make it at, like kind of a... <laughs> the table just shook because the cat jumped up. Uh, she will probably walk right in front of everybody in a minute. Yep, there she is. Right there, right in front of everybody. Okay, Rue, keep moving. Um, there's a cat tail in my view. Okay, so if this is my punk pumpkin, um, I could think about, you know, what, what would the face look like? Um, and so maybe there's, you know, some kind of sneer on here. I mean, people who dress in punk styles are very nice. But I think it would be kind of fun to make something kind of like this. And this is, you know, you could really have a lot of fun looking up different facial expressions um, for whatever you want to use. 
for your um <laughs> come on kitty move 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 um for your pumpkin and then maybe maybe the eyes could be uh i don't know if this is really working actually i'm gonna erase parts of it i'm dodging kitties while i do it <laughs> ah kitty keep moving no one can see if you're standing there the other cat does not do this. She is the one, Rue is the one that loves to generally sit on my um, sketchbook while I'm drawing. Actually, I don't like this mouth at all. Ooh, you know what? As I have a cat right here, I'm, I'm feeling inspired. I don't know what I'll do with the spiky stuff. Oh, maybe this is an animal, not a punk rock thing. I was going to suddenly draw a cat face, but maybe... Maybe this is more of a, um, well, hedgehogs are spiky. I don't think it's like a porcupine. They're too um, thick. So maybe I could find some other found objects to add more spikes on my creature. And then maybe it's a cute little hedgehog. My brother used to have a hedgehog. And uh, they're really adorable animals. Um, so instead of all this sort of cool and snarling and whatever for the punk rock. Now I could kind of make a little hedgehog face. Oh, so cute. And so they have these really adorable little eyes, kind of wide set. And um, so I'd have to kind of think about how I would make that highlight. Maybe that's the light of the pumpkin on the inside glowing. I don't know. Um, and they have these cute little pointy noses. And it's just so cute. Oh. Now the only problem is this is in black and white. And in reality, it would be an orange pumpkin and it would be, um, you know, green up here. And I'm not going to put paint on my um, pumpkin. But maybe if I had other elements that were green that came down, it would carry this effect. And if I peel away some of that orange over here and make the face mostly white, uh, maybe that would work. The only thing I'd also have to consider is how I'm making this cone of the nose come out. So I might want to make that out of something else uh, to see if that would uh, protrude and, and give the effect that I'm looking for. Um, so I'm going to give it a little smile under there. <laughs> or, you know what, I could, as an illustrator, I feel like I have the freedom to make all kinds of character design changes. I could just make a little dark nose and a little smile. And then maybe that's enough. Um, so that could work. And then maybe, maybe because they have cute little paws, maybe I make little potato paws do this. The only thing is my aloe plant probably does not want to be left outside uh, on the cold nights in October. So maybe this isn't the perfect plant for this. Um, but I do have a lot of plants outside that are kind of full of um, grasses and all kinds of weeds and things. So maybe that would be a good one to do. So I'm going to turn the page if the cat will let me. And try one more with like a messy hair. Kind of little kitty. Just sit, just sit. Um, okay, so here's my pumpkin. <laughs> this isn't helping. Um, <laughs> she's like, draw a cat. What's wrong with you? Why won't you just draw a cat pumpkin? All right, I think I'm gonna take her hint and instead of the wild hair, because that could, that could be on anything. Let's make a cat pumpkin. She seems to want to be included. Okay, so we're going to draw some cat eyes. Um, so over here, they're going to be wide eyes set apart. Now you can do this sort of sliver like this that are mostly in cat's eyes. Or you could make them more cartoony if you want. It's up to you. And then I'm going to make a little nose and then the fun part of this could be the whiskers actually 
think I'm going to change this to more cartoony eyes. I like cartoony eyes and pumpkins. So maybe something like this. And maybe, maybe the cat's looking at a mouse. You could have another pumpkin next to it with like a little mouse. So a little cat face here. And then we could put little sticks or twigs to make the, um, the little whiskers. And then the ears would have to be made from something that can stick up and hopefully not get blown over in the wind. So that would be, that would be a technical challenge to figure out. Uh, but that could be a really fun pumpkin. And then, you know, th this part of the face could be very uh, smooth. And then maybe there's like a couple little furry bits off to the side. That could be really fun. Let's say, and w maybe this means we take off the stem up here uh, so that there's no stem. So here's our cat pumpkin. And then maybe, I'm just gonna scooch this over. Maybe we could have another little pumpkin. Sometimes people have a variety of pumpkins on their, on their stoop. Maybe there's like a little uh, stem here. And then maybe that's the tail of the mouse as it runs away. Maybe we can add to that. Oh, I don't know. This could be, this could be kind of carved out and kind of wrap around the pumpkin. I don't know that this is really working to have that up there. But this is, again, why we would draw this out, because even though I have an idea and I think it might be funny, you know, just drawing the tail and then having the mouse go this way, it looks a little awkward. So, you know, if that doesn't work, um, then I can, I can make the adjustment with just a simple eraser. Uh, otherwise, if I'm carving a pumpkin, I change my idea midway, that gets complicated. So something I could do if I want to. And then maybe if you feel like you have the energy to do this, you could put a little paw here, kind of grasping the tail. <laughs> this poor little mouse. Um, and, you know, have it come down like this if you want to, if this is part of your Halloween thing. Um, but that might be way too ambitious and that might also look a little funny because I feel like a cat paw is so fuzzy It's hard to really see what's happening. So I think I'm gonna get rid of that part because I don't think I want to use that in my design Okay So I think I'm gonna Imagine what it would look like if these were lit on a nice Halloween night that is my daughter making lots of noise next door. Okay, so whatever the fabric is for the cat ears, um, and I'll leave that be. This is all going to be darkened up because this is the orange of the pumpkin. Oh, and you know what might be fun And thinking about color and all this? Um, there are some orange tiger cats that are beautiful that, you know, maybe it's not just flat orange. Maybe there's some stripes in there. Um, which would be kind of fun. Actually, I never even looked up tigers, but I bet you could do a beautiful design with a tiger face instead of just a regular house cat. And then darken up these eyes too. That would be part of it. And then this would be the inner part of the pumpkin. So that's one that you could do. And then here, again, just sort of darkening up all around the pumpkin, I mean, around the mouse. This is all the orange of the pumpkin. And then, you know, sitting there waiting for trick-or-treaters. There could be these two, you know, cat and mouse. Um, or you could put another couple pumpkins in front of the cat as paws. Those could be the paws. And then you could kind of carve in a little bit of the shape of the paws if you feel like it. That seems like a lot of work, but you could definitely do it. 
Actually, I don't like that. Again, eraser. Glad I just looked at that and did it with the eraser because I didn't waste time on two more pumpkins. Oh, and I could put um, some sticks in here to make some whiskers as well. Uh, so that could be my um, cat and mouse pumpkin. And just because I have a few minutes left, I'd love to see like what it would look like if I had a tiger face. And I know I probably should be looking at a source photo for a tiger, but I'm just gonna see you know what happens if I um, kind of add those uh, stripes. And their ears aren't quite as big, but if we have like a stripe of orange and then we carve on either side, that could be really pretty. And it's also orange, like a zebra could work with stripes too, but I think because this is orange, it makes more sense to do a tiger. That could be a lot of fun. And then the dark nose, and then have some whiskers put in. That could be a really fun pumpkin. So whatever you guys have come up with today, I think it would be so great if you, um, you know, in, you know, took a picture of your work and then included it in social media and you can tag me um, on Instagram. I am Barbara DiLorenzo Books. Um, and so that's Instagram. And Twitter is Barb DiLorenzo. Oh, I ran into the tiger. Um, well, or if you just want to put it up on your fridge, that's fine too. Uh, this month is Inktober, so if anybody is interested in participating in Inktober, um, you can look that up, and it is so much fun. Um, you basically just draw something different every single day. You can either put that up on your fridge, or you can put a hashtag and then either Inktober or Arttober, or there are so many different prompts. Um, there will be the same prompt, depending on what competition you're doing. Not competition, it's sort of like a friendly community art uh, activity. Um, you would just put the um, hashtag in for what group you're in, but every group has a different set of prompts, and you might have some scary ones, you might have some silly ones, uh, whatever it is. Um, you know, you just put that in and it is searchable. So, but you don't have to put it on social media. Um, art should just be fun for art's sake. So anyway, I hope you guys had a good time uh, drawing some pumpkin designs with me. And, um, and I look forward to seeing whatever designs you guys post. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday and um, I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> I see some clapping in the chat. Thank you guys. <laughs> Take care, everyone.